Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our very special fireside chat talking about making it through during the holiday season. We are so thrilled to have two amazing, amazing guests that are going to be joining us today. The amazing Delina Soto and our uh, amazing and dear friend, um, Anna Sweeney. Um, so we're going to just wait to uh, have them join. We cannot wait. Um, come on. Um, but in the meantime, we sincerely hope that you have all had a phenomenal holiday season. Hi, how Hi. are you? Hi. It is so good to see you. Likewise. I am so excited to have you join. We are such huge fans of yours at the Alliance. You have helped so many folks, and I'm just so excited to have an amazing conversation. Hey, Anna, how are you? Hi, I'm okay. How are you doing? Um, today is my favorite day ever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Those of, really, of, of you who know who may know me on here, um, I adore these two fabulous humans. I follow them personally and at the office. So um, before we get started, I just want to um, just welcome everybody um, to the National Alliance for Eating Disorders December Fireside Chat on navigating the holiday season. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we have two phenomenal guests, as we had shared, the amazing Dalina Soto and um, Anna Sweeney. So um, now that I fangirled enough, <laughs> uh, take a brief moment to ask each of you to um, just say hi and um, to share a little bit about you. So Delina, are you willing to start? Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Delina Soto. So I am a registered dietitian. Um, I work from a cultural lens, uh, health at every size, intuitive eating. Um, and I just kind of want to bridge kind of like that information and a lot of that nuance that is missed when we think about our culture and how to translate a lot of the information that we're learning, um, especially like around recovery um, and kind of just how to, you know, get that information across. So I love that. Thank you so much. And, and Anna, we'd love to have you share a little bit about you. Sure. Um, I'm delighted to be here and equally fangirling both of you. <laughs> I am an eating disorder dietitian. I practice from a health at every size, um, intuitive eating, but very social justice forward lens. Um, and I am like learning all the time. So I'm just happy to be here with everyone and realizing I need a new backdrop. Because <laughs> <laughs> Work on it. It's home. <laughs> Five years into the pandemic. <laughs> so I think we're good enough is good enough, as our clinical director likes to say. You know, we're surviving. And, yes. You know, you said something, Anna, at the beginning of the pandemic that literally has become my motto making it through the day is, you know, this is not a vacation. This is a pandemic that we are existing. And I, you said it right at the beginning of the pandemic. And it literally, I will tell you, I very much like, I'm sure a lot of folks that are watching got very into the, okay, I need to do X, Y, and Z. I need to perform. I need to do this. And, you know, I'm like, I can't effing do it. Like, I just <laughs> can't do it. And hearing your words um, almost gave me that um opportunity to say, you know what, this is not a vacation. We're just trying to exist. And I think that a lot of folks that are tuning in tonight about this conversation are also feeling the same way about the holiday season. You know, there's this perception of what the holiday should be like, um, that, you know, the Hallmark movies that mm -hmm. no one wants to admit they all love and they all watch. And then you act surprised at the end of it, like, you know, how it was going to end from like the first minute it started. Um, but I really want to get into conversation um, that we have received in, in preparation for this, this talk. And Anna, I want to ask you first, what do you think specifically about the holiday season that makes it so hard for individuals that are experiencing eating disorders and recovering from eating disorders? I think it is such a multifaceted, but a superbly important question. Um, and I think there are a number of factors that we are contending with. So firstly, the diet industry is notoriously, obnoxiously 
and like subtly loud right now. I'm getting text messages for weight loss because I <laughs> internet's like that's terrible. That like ugh. um so this is this is messaging is is everywhere. Um and we start seeing things like post Thanksgiving, you know, everything is gets loud and loud and loud and louder and then we make these New Year's resolutions and you know all of all of that. Um and I think this year particularly because I think a lot of humans actually benefited last year from getting a holiday pass, right? Like it was, it wasn't safe to be with family. And so now if we are being asked to enter or re-enter um, circumstances or positions where we are made to feel feelings that have been experienced historically, or we are with people who have been challenging in the past, we are now going to have to engage with these people um, in ways that we didn't have to last year. So it's like, oh. lost. Yeah, I think we lost the audio. Sorry, no, my, my dad was calling me. So oh. there <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was vibrating <laughs> too. Um, no. <laughs> I'm done. Well, no, I think what you said was so was so right on. And I, you know, it really segues so beautifully, Anna, into what, you know, my first question for um, Delina is, is it would not be the holiday season without the bullshit diet talk. And mm -hmm. uh, which, but it is, you know, um, you know, I, 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 we say jokingly in the office, like, you know, we don't need to hear about like your keto. We don't have to hear about <laughs> this. Like, you know, setting almost boundaries around diet talk. Um, how, and, and, and I will tell you very directly in our support groups that, that, that we hold, this has been coming up a lot is this fear around diet talk, around um, body shape and size has been coming up. How would you say for folks that are tuning in to be able to cope with this, to be able to maybe show up to a, a dinner, whatever it is, and not engage in that? Yeah. Is that a question for me? Yes. <laughs> um, so that's so difficult because, you know, sometimes, like Anna said, this is the only time that you might be engaging with these folks in your family because it's the holidays. And, you know, we often see it as, a, you know, I mean, I view it as an amazing uh, way to connect with family, but I know that that's not the case for a lot of other people. And so I think that as we're moving towards these, you know, holidays, I think it's important to kind of like, like conf not confront who it is that you're going to be dealing with, but like even just like sending them a text or just like having a conversation before you go to the event. Because I think that a lot of the times, you know, we, we tell ourselves, I'm going to stop them then. I'm going to set a boundary then. I'm going to say X, Y, Z when I get there. And then you get there and you say it and that person might feel put on the spot and might feel confrontational and might escalate into a way that you don't want it to be. So maybe connecting to that problematic person um, ahead of time, letting them know through a text message, any way that feels safe, um, that you don't want to engage in this kind of talk, that you're working through some things, that you, you want to set that gentle boundary ahead of time. Um, and I think it's also important to understand that we don't have to go to these events if we're not in a place where we feel safe um, or, you know, a place where we feel like we are going to be able to enjoy our time. Um, I think it's it's really hard, at least for me, to say that out loud, right? Coming from a Latinx family where, like, it's family or everything. Like, family or die, right? And it's taken me some time to understand that sometimes family is toxic. And it's okay to, you know, cut them out of your life. Um, as much as I love my family, there's some people that maybe I don't need to engage with. Um, and you can set those boundaries with with them either ahead of time or, you know, that, you know, just not go. It's okay. Like you have to do what's right for you. I, I absolutely love that. And I think you know, folks that are tuning in need to hear that because they're, again, because of the narrative that we're given in our society that we live in, that you have to show up, you have to, you know, it's okay if people like blow through your boundaries. And, and the truth of the matter is it's, it's really not. And I think that for so many of us that have experienced eating disorders or on the journey of recovery, 
you know, it's really hard to use our voice. It's really hard to lay those boundaries down. There's that fear of confrontation. And I love what you said about doing it beforehand, because I feel like there's already so many pieces like, oh my gosh, like, for example, like if there's going to be certain foods and, you know, we always tell people to plan with their dietitians, to plan with their um, nutritionists, to, you know, sort of walk their way through. But on top of that, with the anxiety of the holiday, and then you have to confront someone or lay that boundary down, it can get overwhelming. So I really genuinely love the idea of doing it ahead of time. You know, um, I used to share with people all the time, like, these are some topics I absolutely do not want to talk about. And if they are starting to talk about, I, I'm going to take care of myself and, and get up from the table mm -hmm. and or leave. Um, the other thing someone messaged about is actually having someone maybe there with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Person um, where you have like a code word, for example, that can help you um, help you get out of the situation. So I love tools like that. The idea of, of coping ahead and planning and having the safe word. So Anna, um, for you, like what are some other good coping tools to integrate into your arsenal of tools in preparation for the holidays? Okay, so my phone is doing a weird thing, but I think the most important thing going into the holidays is actually being adequately nourished, right? Yeah. Plan, we're acknowledging like food is going to be different. The most important coping strategy for any one of us going into a stressful holiday season is being well fed. So I'm that I'm <laughs> going to say just <laughs> food, like plan, follow your meal plan. If you have a meal plan, talk with your practitioners about how to comfortably or as comfortably as possible um, follow said meal plan when you are engaging in holiday, you know, events, experiences, whatever. Um, and I, you know, I think it's really, really important when it comes to um, taking care of ourselves in a season that is all about like giving that we are really, really thoughtful about being intentional about where we put our time and where we place our energy. And so whatever sorts of coping strategies you have in your bucket, I don't know, I don't know what they are. Um, I have a number of clients who are, are doing a lot of kind of deep dive journaling about intentions for the holiday season, um, are deepening like text message threads for holiday like holiday rescue experience i have people they're creating bingo cards for like unfortunate things still happen <laughs> at events to be able to just add a little levity and space um i think that we we should acknowledge like this is going to be challenging this is going to be different it's not last year's party um and you know however you health in all of the ways um please 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 experiment with what works for you and if something doesn't work um it, like move on to the next thing so if you if you like coloring or if you like listening to music or if you like like deep breathing whatever feels best for you have a strategy so that you can utilize all of the things i am a very big fan of like the pause and like a five deep breath thing, close your eyes and it's like, wow, you kind of disappear for just a few breaths <laughs> and come back. Something will work, something will not. And like, you'll, you'll find the right thing. I love that. Um, Delina, I don't know if you have any, any other uh, tools to add to that, um, that you've been working with your, with, with your clients in preparation for, for the holidays. Yeah, and I think, um, no, I, I love everything Anna said. I would even add, like, downloading, like, a game on your phone or something that you can, like, just dive into. Like, I love Candy Crush. <laughs> so, like, Candy Crush, you can kind of, like, get lost in it almost and not, and, like, you know, get rid of all that noise. Um, I know a lot of my clients are, like, not really into, like, journaling or just feel like it's weird or, like, the affirmations. So um, we talk about just, like, the breathing and, like, connecting, like, grounding yourself, you know. Sometimes that's what we need, right? Like, taking your shoes off, um, feeling the cold floor if you're somewhere, um, being intentional about breathing. 
Um, and kind of just like utilizing, you know, the technology to your advantage, like, oh, there's a conversation going, oh, somebody just texted me, I really need to take this or like, oh, my phone's vibrating, I got to go pick this up, right? Like, nobody's gonna look at your phone. Um, but using that to your advantage, if you want to like, dip from a conversation. <laughs> um, it's so, so important. And I think, again, going back to the expectations, I love that, that, that um, you both have said this idea of expectations that we're expected to show up a certain way. We're expected to be part of every conversation. We're ex and the truth of the matter is, is that you may actually have family that expects that. And that doesn't mean that that has to happen. You know, we're sharing about, you know, your holiday, Delina. Like I come from a very Jewish French background and like our love language is food, period. <laughs> and story of, and we're also going to tell you when you've eaten too much. Yes, yes. It's like we love with food and we're going to criticize how you look at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. so absolutely get that. Um, and I also want to also acknowledge of the importance of continuing to take care of yourself. The holidays are another day just like any other day. And I feel like we there's so much buildup to this event, if you will, that it's like, oh, you know, I mean, think about what we just experienced for Thanksgiving. Literally, I had family members who know what I do for a living. I mean, <laughs> order organization that literally in front of me said be careful don't eat too much before you get to Thanksgiving dinner and I'm just I just looked at them and I'm like really after all this time you're still going there you know? <laughs> no day is a day like other day yeah like God willing and you know we get to take up space we get to be seen we get to be heard and we deserve support and and something that I just want to just share with everyone because it actually segues way into my next question for you Delina is you know identify someone that can be a support for you whether it's in the space or it's outside of the space so a text a phone call um and also try try not to continuously which is something that I did get support from people that cannot support me you know I say that all the time I, I wanted to get support from certain people in my family and I kept on going there and kept on going there and over and over and over again I would get disappointed you know um and just like that the analogy like you don't go to a hardware store to buy bread like every time you walk into the hardware store and you realize oh there's no bread okay there's no bread here so have a set of people. So for loved ones that are listening, because we, we really do a lot of support with loved ones, what are some advice on being a good ally for your loved one that's experiencing an eating disorder during the holiday season? Standing up for them and kind of like shutting down the conversation before that person even has to do it. Um, taking the problematic person to the side and maybe you being the one that says it in a, in a nice way that doesn't seem, again, confrontational. Um, kind of like being there next to that person, you know, being their rock, you know, like holding their hand under the table if you need to, you know, moving them away. If you hear the conversation coming to get them like, oh, sorry, excuse me, I need her for a moment or I need him for a moment, um, grabbing them away, just, just kind of like being there for them. Um, but I think that sometimes it's easier to hear from the ally um, what's going on than the actual person because there's so much emotion with the person that's going through the eating disorder um, that sometimes that could seem like a, like a wall for the person listening as opposed to if someone can come in with less emotion and, and speak to the others, you know, I, I, I'm a very emotional person. So that's really hard for me to say because <laughs> everything I feel is like in my facial expressions, but that's not always great. <laughs> so having someone that could have a more like neutral expression, maybe explain things in a different way to someone else in your family. Um, that's really what, you know, being an ally, an ally is, right? It's like being able to stand up for it, for that person when, they can't stand up for themselves. So um, being aware of that. I, I love that. And Anna, wondering if you have um, additional to share for our loved ones as far as, you know, supporting. So I think there are, I have two things that are in my brain and I'm actually thinking about my sister who is a recovered person. Um, and what I wish I had done when Katie was struggling was ask her how I could be of help, right? I can have a million ideas in the back of my house. This is just one thing. Um, but I think that I truly, I think that is the most important thing is asking the person, like, what is it that I can do 
to make this experience more comfortable or more supportive or what is it that you need here from me? How can I support you here? And also, and like there are these little things. So like without getting too personal, I have memories of holidays where I can remember when I was aware of the fact that my sister was like something was hard. And I've also been like aware when nothing is hard and it's an amazing thing. And so as care per, caretakers, as people who love humans who are living with eating disorders, please be open to the idea that your people might be in different places than they have been in the past. I think that we have, there is a, a little bit of kind of histrionic stuff that can happen when it comes to like a person being the designated human with an eating disorder and then having this expectation that this is what it's going to look like. As people who love humans with eating disorders, as I do, um, be, be ready for the experience to be different. Um, and not on the day, but like make reflections. If they are positive reflections, think about how that might feel to talk to your person about that. But just let, let's, let's be open for, for new experiencing. I, I love that. And I think that that's such a beautiful reminder for, for folks that are su support as well as individuals that are going through it themselves. You know, I think that, you know, we, we always talk about like in our groups and in our community, just of like, you know, you have some coping skills that are tried and true that have worked forever. You have some coping skills that, that maybe worked at the beginning and that are not working anymore and saying that never worked. Um, and then there's coping skills that maybe your, 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 you know, community members have used that really work for them. Like we talked about journaling versus playing games versus coloring, you know, is that you're not doing recovery wrong if it's not working. And just like, you know, maybe the Thanksgiving holiday, if you celebrated it was very easy for you and maybe Christmas or, you know, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever, you know, um, holiday you're celebrating might be a little bit more difficult this, this year, as opposed to even a month ago. That doesn't mean that you're failing at recovery. It just means that we're humans that are existing. And the one thing that I say all the time is that, you know, you recover, you recover to life, not utopia. It's not sunshine bunnies and rainbows. It's not going to be, you know, perfect every day. In fact, it's never going to be perfect. You know, recovery is messy. And let's all take a moment to remember we're going into our third year of the pandemic and I don't know about any of like as someone of lived that you know for me it, it never was just my eating disorder in that proverbial car it was anxiety and depression like it's had a heyday and I'm very tired and I can fully show up in that and just to be able to vocalize that say this has been an exhausting two years. There's been a lot of silver linings. There's also been a lot of hurt. There's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of everything. Um, reminding ourselves that how we felt last holiday to this holiday is going to be different. How I feel today is probably going to be different from tomorrow. So holding space and grace for that. I love that reminder so much. So in that vein, Anna, um, what would you suggest as far as taking a pause, like really great self-care, um, just things that people can do that may be feeling the overwhelmingness of the last two years, of the holidays, of recovery, all of that. So I think that we, uh, just briefly, um, self-care in its, you know, easy sense is like, go get a manicure, get a pedicure, do, you know, get a massage, do these things that are outside of yourself. I'm going to go back to self-care. Number one, uh, like the most important thing to provide ourselves with self-care is to be adequately fed so that we can engage in self-care practices. And I think about self-care really differently. And I'm actually going to bring myself into this for a moment. As a person with a progressive disability, like the, the ways in which I you know, navigate the planet and practice self-care are really different than they were when I lived in a more able body. And so thinking about 
what is accessible to me? What is, what is something I can take with me all the time? Um, I, as I said at the beginning, like I am a really big fan of really intentional breathing. Um, I am a really big fan of giving ourselves a big break. I think people take the idea of like resting and relaxation as this thing that we need to earn. I dump that for all 365 days of the year and replace it with the idea that like, you know, like your body can't differentiate holiday food from not holiday food. It's just food. And like relaxation is a thing that we, you know, earn by being, by being alive. And so leaning into whatever it is that feels rejuvenating this season and I'm sorry, it's past my bedtime. And so I don't have a very eloquent answer. I'm <laughs> saying, please allow yourself to rest. Please allow yourself to slow down. This is going to get really great and really chaotic. Um, and like the, the, the diet culture sounds are just going to get louder. So actually practical self-care, pick up your social media, unsubscribe from yeah. lists that are not helpful do the things that you can like that you can maintain a locus con of control around i bought something on the internet i don't know what but i gave out my cell phone number and now i get weight loss texts yeah like give them a, fo a fake number i don't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but let's be conscious of the ways in which we engage with with the noise that is like the not sparkle and like Hanukkah was so early this year. So like we're done. Um, yep. Like let just be really, really conscious of the ways in which you are engaging with the noise because the noise exists to get you to push the button, to get your attention. It's noisy because noise gets attention. Yeah. Not because it's valid or interested in you at all. Yeah. That's so, so, so true. And you know, Something that you said really struck a chord and that something that we talk about a lot is, you know, people will say, if you're tired, um, um, you can take some time to rest. We're going to challenge that and say, you have to rest. Just how we talk about, you have to nourish yourself, you have to rest. Um, rest is just as important. We have to fill up our cups in order to be able to keep on going. And I know that for many people that are, that are watching this, you know, sometimes rest seems unproductive. I know, I remember early in my recovery, I had um, my amazing dietitian who literally, if she was watching this now, would be like, it's ridiculous that you're doing what you're doing because I'm such an asshole, excuse my language, but like, I was not at all. Anyways, you know, she would assign me sitting for five minutes watching TV and I wasn't allowed to do anything else. I wasn't allowed to fold laundry. I wasn't allowed to write. I wasn't allowed to do anything. And I remember thinking that is the most unproductive use of my time. And what I ultimately realized is that that is the most important use of my time. Me taking care of myself is the most important thing. And despite what the, what the crappy committee between my ears has told me that I don't deserve, that I don't need, that I don't need any of that, we do. Because the earth needs each and every one of you that are, that are joining us today. And, and we need you to stay. We need you to fuel yourself, mind, body, and spirit. And, you know, again, we have to rest. We have to nourish. We have to take care of ourselves. Um, and so... Delina, I'm wondering, same question for you. Um, what, you know, as far as like self-care goes and, and, you know, maybe even leaning into some holiday fun that we can do that's not centered around food and, and honestly, truthfully, not centered around recovery either, meaning not engaging in behaviors, but we're humans that are experiencing and recovering from eating disorders. That's not who we are. It's what we're going through. And I love the idea of being so much more than our diseases. Yeah, um, and I'm going to echo everything, um, you know, Anna said, I, I think nourishing your body is literally the ultimate form of self care. So that's really what we want to focus on, because you can't live life to your fullest. If you're hungry, <laughs> you can't pay attention to nothing else. If you're not fully, you know, nourished, 
mentally and, and, you know, in your soul and, and everything that food gives us, you know, not just energy. So that's important. I will add that, like, I oftentimes like to like lay down and like either hug myself or use the way in blanket or even just like tap my face and kind of like connect to my body and the sensations. Um, even if it's just five minutes, like I'll put five minute timer on um, and I'll just like rub my shoulders or, you know, anything to make me feel you know, connected to my body at that moment um, is something I would add. Because sometimes, like, watching TV for five minutes without doing anything can seem so, like, ah! But if you are, you know, like, you know, rubbing your, your arms or, like, just, like, tapping your face, like, that could be a little bit more doable for five minutes, right? Um, so I would just add that. And as, you know, something else that we can do, you know, we can create new memories, we can, you know, create new games, you know, we can create new traditions um, for ourselves and for others, you know, something that my family has created in the last few years was like a holiday pajama party where um, everybody just wore pajamas. And, you know, it was like a whole day of know just having fun and playing games we we love to have family olympics so we would have like things like that you know in our pajamas so you could create new memories and new traditions um around the holidays that have nothing to do with with you know the regular holidays i would say i love that and, and what i i've loved so much listening to both of you is you can create the holiday, the day, the moment to be what you want it to be. And, you know, maybe those around you might not be fully on board. And this is where you need to be self considerate, and you need to consider yourself and, and put you and your recovery really at the forefront of your journey. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of questions about, you know, what happens after like the like the Christmas holiday, the minute that the clock strikes midnight on January 1st, 2022. I don't know about you, but I get this like shudder of Oh, no, because it's everywhere you turn, everywhere you go. It's the diet, the new year, new you. Oh, we're not a new you. Like, we're <laughs> fabulous the way, the way we are. And so um, I, I know we're starting to run out of time, but I would really love to just ask both of you, how do you navigate that? How do you turn off the noise? I just want to throw in and say, follow both of these incredible humans um, and follow a lot of other people. <laughs> you give so much tangible um, play by play and reminders of that we're allowed to exist in the bodies and in the, the earth suits to quote you, Anna, that we were given, we don't need to alter ourselves to societal's ideals or, you know, weight biased, fat phobic, um, you know, bodies that many of us are not able to have um, because it's not who we are. So how do we bypass all the noise and all the, the bullshit that we're hearing and, and really focus on continuing to take care of ourselves? So, um, and I would love to have you start with that one. So I think it's really important, Joanna, and I appreciate the question. It is the nastiest time of the year in terms of eating disorder recovery. This is this is like strap your boots all the way on and get ready to put on earmuffs because what is about to come is the most vile parts of the $71 billion industry that like speaks so much about the things that we need to do to earn our body or earn our food or like modify our bodies in the coming year. All of this messaging is about money. And it doesn't make it easier, right? Because we still have to navigate it. We still have to be, we're still made to listen to this stuff. And it's not about me and it's not about you and it's not about you, Delina. It's about somebody else making a lot of money. Um, it is going to be loud. And I think being prepared for the fact that like this is, and so because of the fact that is coming and we have awareness of what I would get really curious I, I think following you know humans that will help kind of help you to navigate this part of the world and it's like a really incredible thing that social media can be really helpful it can also be really toxic um and I don't know how much of like 
human interaction people are doing these days in the, this is still kind of pandemic territory and I work from my home. Um, let us be as gentle with ourselves, interacting with real life, like tangible storefront stuff as we are here on Instagram, on social media, because this is the platform for peddling what is what is going to happen in the next several months. And so, and I guess the next month, what, what day is it? Who am I? <laughs> this that. is, yeah. Um, you have so much more power by, by muting, by unfollowing, by doing the things to really protect yourself. The noise will be there. If we can acknowledge that it is noise and you can protect yourself by turning off as much as you can, do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Delina. So I will not add a lot much more to that. I think Anna said everything. I would say that I delete my Instagram app. This is like probably very late for me to be on here. My <laughs> app is usually deleted by like 4 p.m. Eastern <laughs> and is now <laughs> redownloaded until the next morning. But I will say like you're in control. I think that we think like the ads um, are in control of us, but you can report them. You can tell Instagram you don't like these ads and the algorithm will be like, oh, she has, you know, they don't want to see this. The more that you report and say, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. The more those ads are muted. I don't, I don't know if my app is different, but I don't get ads. <laughs> that is I don't get ads because every time I see what I'm like, X, <laughs> not for me. This is inappropriate. I am constantly reporting anything that, you know, I see. So I think the algorithm has gotten to the point where it's like, oh, yeah, she doesn't want to see these. <laughs> um, so you can do that. You can start doing that now um, and start reporting everything. Start on unfollowing people if it's family members and you don't want them to know you can mute them you can mute their feed you can mute their stories um and they will never know so you can start creating that you know space for you to feel safe come january now you have a lot of time to report a lot of ads <laughs> so <laughs> so happy you talked about reporting ads it's really one of my most favorite things to do like I just sit there and um you know I report them I say they're misleading yeah I, yeah and it's like a hundred percent like I was getting a plethora of them which I always think is so funny like considering like the content that mm -hmm. I do and the content I put out and then but yeah just continue and it it sort of gives us back our power a little mm -hmm. bit I don't it makes me very happy yeah so it makes me happy <laughs> um so I really know, I just, I really appreciate both of you so very much. I know that this is, you know, later than you, than you both um, like to be on social, but I do have one final question um, before, as we wrap up, you know, for me, the holidays uh, is always a time of reflection and really leaning into gratitude. Um, and so what I wanted to ask both of you and Delina, I'm going to ask you first is this holiday season, what are you most grateful for? So my kids who are like running around here, um, <laughs> I would say um, I'm most grateful for them um, just because they allow me to be their mama. So I love, I love, you. Uh, what are you most grateful for this? I most grateful for I'm a, my partner. I put my dog down yesterday. Oh. And yeah, no, I know. Um, and I feel really grateful to be um, held in this very unpleasant time. And, and like, probably tied with that is like my amazing humans that show up and do really badass work every day. Um, the, the gratitude that I have for that is it's pretty unspeakable. Yeah, absolutely. I am always so taken aback by the bravery. Um, and I actually use the word badassery that happens in our virtual support groups. Um, I'm so eternally grateful to the both of you for tonight, but also um, for both existing in this world. Um, 
we are better because you are both in it. We are we are better because you both do the work that we do. And um, you know, I want to remind everyone who's watching out there um, that uh, the National Alliance for Eating Disorders, the leading national that a free mission led support groups. Um, we actually do not have group during Christmas Day. I wasn't allowed to do it. That I had to like set boundaries and take care of myself. So we are adding a new uh, uh, two new groups um, on Thursday, December 23rd and Thursday, December 30th, because we really want you all to have support. Um, we have the largest and inclusive referral database of all um, eating disorder providers and treatment centers. Please call us. We can refer you to care. We have amazing clinicians that pick up the phone. Um, but more than anything, we're here to walk next to you because we really believe that all folks that experience all eating disorders deserve care. They deserve to be seen and heard and supported. And the one thing that I just want to share um, more than anything um, is that recovery is possible um, and it's happening. And thank you both so, so, so much um, for your wise words, for your kindness, um, for your generosity. Um, and if there's anything that we can do with the Alliance, do not hesitate to reach out. Please follow these two amazing humans if you don't like I said, now you can hear my little one that's screaming in the background. <laughs> so I am very grateful. For <laughs> but thank you for joining us this this evening. Um, please take care, be safe, and I will see you soon. Bye, Bye everyone. Take care. <laughs>